Hi, this is Miss O'D. And this is Flynn. We're going to uh, give you a quick little demo of how to use Logger Pro and modeling um, with a bike wheel. So we're gonna import a video. So first thing you need to do is find the video on its learning and maybe save it to your desktop. Okay, so to do that, you go to the obvious place of insert, movie, and it should be on my desktop. It's called Bike Wheel Movie, nice and obvious for you. And ta-da! There it is, but it doesn't look so pretty in there, so what can we do to rearrange that? There's a nice little option. If we go to, oh, sorry, no, page. If we go to page and auto-arrange, it just fits that movie in nicely. Okay. Now to model our bike, we have to think about what's the best way to do this. How can we model points on our bike? bike? So the best idea is to pick a, a key spot on your wheel and then always use that spot. So in this case, the reflector is probably a good place to start. Okay. So we're always going to put a point on that reflector. And we'll try to get in the middle as best as we can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so go to this little, these dots first. And before you put a dot on, actually, what you need to do is you need to move the video so that it's just spinning, just about to be spun. So you see his hand there. He's just about to grab the wheel, and there we go. He's starting to spin. You think there, Miss Flynn? Yeah, I think that's a good starting point. Okay. Once you've just moved it to a certain spot, it doesn't matter if it's not the same, everyone doesn't have the same spot. You then go up here to the red dot, add point, try and get it in the middle, and then it uh, moves the frame nicely for you. And you just keep putting points on that reflector. I know it's hard to see because it's a bit blurred, but you just do the do best, best you can. You can. Go a couple times around. We've made it one and a half times around the, the wheel. It's probably a good idea to make it. How many times do you think I don't know, maybe, maybe three would be good. Okay, are you counting? Yep, good. we're almost there. Okay. So you just do this. There we go. That's okay. Now this looks a bit confusing over here. There's all these dots everywhere. We can get rid of some of those because we don't need them. So if you go down to the table down here, we can get rid of all these V ones to start with. So click on the heading, right click, delete column, and get rid of those quickly. And you can also get rid of the Xs. We don't need the X because our function is going to be in relation to time, where that reflector was with respect to time, and the height of the reflector, which is what the Y is. All right. So there's our function. Okay, so we want to try and model these dots, these points. So if we go up here to this funny little one that has two curves, it says curve fit. Now, well, that looks pretty. I wonder what sort Good of job, function Mr. it Dan. might be. Mm. <laughs> so the first thing you're going to do is you have to do a manual fit. So this means that before you get to this point, you might want to have a look at these points here. And then from all the work that we've done in class, you need to find the values of all the different constants that we have in our um, trig function. So your A, B, C, and D, you want to find those? Yeah. By hand. By hand. So you do that by hand. Then, to see how well it fits, you can define your own function. Miss Flynn, what sort of function are we going to use? So we'll do A, sine, oh, times. Yeah, do don't forget the times. Sine, parenthesis, B, parenthesis, x minus c and parenthesis and parenthesis plus d okay so that's the standard sine curve that we use in sl you can even rename it so i'll call it because they already have a sine function so defined sine bike sine bike that's a good idea <laughs> sine bike that's our function we're defining i go okay oh oh, must oh t. Be t silly us yeah good catch okay there we go. Now what you do, once you, because you've already come up for values for A, B, and C, you can then just change them here. And, and then, then you get to see what your graph looks yeah, like. Yeah, and then it will draw, and you can see how close it is. Once you've done that, the other thing you can do to confirm how close yours is, is you can see up here that they have a sign function already defined. It's a little bit different to ours as a, a set of parentheses, and it's got a plus there. Um, but we can use this one. And then if we choose, make sure it's on automatic, 
So choose the air sign function, make sure it's on automatic, and if we choose try fit, we can then see what their function looks like. If I go OK, it's drawn on there, and they're just our different constants for A, B, and C. So then you can compare that function to the one that you came up with, and uh, then we're done. See which one's a better fit? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Good luck. Bye.